Yeah, that is a lot of experience really quickly and easily. How are we doing this? You don't want to miss out. Hey, it's Dan and welcome back to Unified Gaming. Now in this one, I'm going to share with you how I farm experience on the Elder Scrolls Online and this is mainly for CP. This is a one bar PVE build that uses a magical warden but it can be done on a stamina warden or on any other class in all honesty. Warden though is the best in my opinion for this. This is made mainly to do overland content, so anywhere like Bancoro for example, Crimson Cove, but you can also use this in some places like Skyreach, absolutely fine as you can see in the gameplay, and you can also use this in normal Black Rose Prison, so the gear works for all content. I'm quickly going to show you some EXP boosts that you want to get as well because that's really important. So first and foremost, if you're watching this video as of now, there are XP events that happen from time to time. There was a Jester's event which, as from the time of recording, this was still active but it's not active anymore, but you do have the Jubilee event which is the anniversary that gives you 100% bonus XP. This happens every 2-3 months give or take. So you've got this XP event currently, there's the cake anniversary event for about two weeks as of this video, and there'll be the Witch Mothers one coming up in around about um, October. There may be one before that, but if there is an event on, go and farm XP straight away. Also do make sure that you are getting scrolls, they really help. The 150 ones are the best, obviously, the highest, but you can do this without any scrolls and still do fine or you can use potions as well so you don't have to spend crowns. One thing to also notice, if you are in a group as well, you want to have your mate nearby and they will give you an extra 10% boost just for being in your group. If you have three people though or four people, it gets worse and worse, so two is the sweet spot. It's actually better to have two than it is to have one, that's how much of a boost you get. And there is also an item called the Ring of Mora, which I don't have, I think it's Maya Mora, however you say it but that gives you an XP boost, which we don't need, but we have space for it if you want it. So I did account for that as well. As for the build and what are we doing? Well, as you can see, this is a one bar PVE build that's just made for crazy, crazy XP. If you do like these types of videos where I show you PVE stuff, guides and gameplay, then make sure that you are subscribed and that you like, you comment and you share. It really tells me this is what you want to see and I'll make more going forward. As with this one, we are a Breton. The race makes no difference whatsoever, in all honesty. If you want to have XP even quicker, I would honestly say go as a Dark Elf just because you can kill stuff a little bit quicker. But as you can see in the gameplay, we're one-shotting anything in the Overland anyway, so it's not end of the world. For the kind of attributes and stuff, we have 64 points in Magicka. This gives us 35k Magicka buffed. We also have 4,700 spell damage with the Betion, which is our major sorcery. This goes up to 5,680. And with the Berserk Glyph, which you actually use every time we combo, this puts our spell damage well over 6,000. And if we add in a Dark Elf Race, for example, it's about 6,500. So we hit really hard with 14,000 penetration behind us. We also have 1,100 Magicka Recovery, which is that plus 3 inch from the Betty, so around 1,400 before potions and stuff, and per kill we get about 7,800 magicka back every single kill with no cooldown, so yeah, just sustain is ridiculous on this build. I have made this as beginner friendly as possible, and the gear is easy to get, there's no trial gear. Mundestone wise, we are using the lover, I've tested the lover, I've also tested the shadow and the thief, and they all have very similar DPS. The lover, in all honesty though, was just more consistent, so that's why I went with this one. As with kind of consumables and food, you want to have any food you like really. tri stat food, crown food, cheap tri stat food. If you want to just push damage even higher, go with green food, just max magicka. But I personally would recommend having tri stat food so it gives us access to some mythic items that the, like, reduces our health. As with the skills, this is a one bar build, so if you want to use this in the overland, you can do this absolutely fine. You can see our tooltips are really high, 20,000 deep fissure. With the glyph it's about 22k. We have inner light, which is from the mage guild. We have shock ring. This is from the destruction staff. 
and you actually have to have elemental ring which then turns into shock ring because we have a lightning staff equipped so this does like 10k tooltip and we have pretty much 100% pen against pve mobs so yeah we then have blue betty for access to spell damage and also some resources plus it gives us access to more damage from the advanced species passive which gives us bonus damage we then use Bird of Prey, which gives us access to movement speed, which is really helpful. So we can basically cast this between groups because we have infinite sustain on this build. So we can get around really fast at max movement speed on top of the crazy, crazy damage. And it also gives us Mind of Berserk. So yeah. For the ultimate, I don't actually use one at all. I literally slot Eternal Guardian just because it's an animal companion ability that gives us more damage. So you can change this if you like, okay? If you go into Skyreach, or just places where you might need more skills, then you can actually put on Ice Fortress for more armor. Bird of Prey here is like a flex spot, so change it to whatever you like. Blockade of Frost is quite useful, it's just an AoE, so you could use this along with Winter's Revenge, which they're both AoE, so you can put them on top of each other. Shimmering Shield is phenomenal in the Skyreach, because this gives you Major Heroism, which is really helpful, so you can cast Northern Storm more. And then we have Living Trellis, which heals us as we take damage. So this is kind of like a, your survival AOE bar, should you want to just lay down like dots and stuff to kill bosses, to kill things in dungeons. So you can use this bar here. And on the front bar, we simply just rotate Deep Fisher and spam Shock Ring. That's pretty much it. But as you can see, this is made mainly for farming overland stuff or in sort of delves, not so much in dungeons. What are we also using setwise then? How does this work? Well, for my builds, I try to make them as simple to follow as possible, but if you do have any questions, do leave a comment and I'll get back to you as quick as I can. And if you like what I do here, then like, comment, share, and subscribe. It really, really helps. So what are we doing setwise? We are using a very special set called Vengeance Leech. This is a PVP set and it is tradable. This is arguably the best sustain set for this kind of playstyle. When you kill an enemy, you gain 2510 health, magicka and stamina with no cooldown. So if you kill a group of enemies, you this procs multiple times really fast. So you get crazy sustain from this. What makes this even better is in our skills, because our main kind of finishing skill is Elemental Ring, which has bonus damage if they are um, using the lightning stuff together, which is great. We also get um, this passive here called Destructive Expert, which gives us 3,600 magicka back per kill. So we kill somebody, we get 3,600 from this. We also get 2,510 from this. Plus we get 1,500 from CP as well. So we're getting about 7,000 magicka back per kill, which means our sustain is always full. It's really, really good. And this also fixes the healing, so you get low healing. So it's just phenomenal. You want a lightning staff if you can get this and you want it to be training obviously as we're pushing EXP and you want to have a weapon damage enchantment on this. The combo is really simple. You see the target, you run up to them, cast Deep Fissure, Light Attack, Spam Shock Ring and it will go off and they'll land together and it will just nuke them. Literally from 0, from 100 to 0%. For the other stuff, we have a back bar piece of your choice. So I've just left this blank. You can, this is what I had to spare, but anything here. Monster set wise can be anything you like. If you want to push damage, one Valken Scoria and one Balorg or Kina, or you can go one Kina and one Balorg. Damage is very similar between them. We then use five pieces of spinners. So we have light armor for all of it. Light, 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 and light. And then we have training on everything with Max Magicka. We have Molo Kina head, spinners robe, Balorg shoulders, Spinner's Sash, Thoracian Strangler's Gloves, which is training, Spinner's Braces, and Spinner's Shoes. If you have access to this, and you do the overland, like overworld farming, or you stay in a spot like Crimson Cove, then this is great. If you do something like Skyreach, you can change this for a mythic item of your choice, or just use any other item, like Trainee, for example. For the jewelry, we're using one Avengers Leech, which gives us three pieces on the front bar, which is all we need, in all honesty. And then we then put on spinner ring and one trainee. This trainee piece can be changed to um, ring of the pale order, which I have on me. So you can get healing if you like to do damage. 
which is just really helpful. But we also get some of that from the champion point system anyway, so this isn't needed in all honesty. But if you want to do survival stuff in dungeons, this is great for that. That's kind of the sets and kind of what we're using for all of that. So just to go through it once more, is Vengeance Leech, Lightning Staff, Keener Helmet, Spinner's Robe, Balog Shoulder, Spinner Sash, Strangler's Hands, Spinner's Legs, Spinner's Shoes, Vengeance Leech, Leech Necklace, and this wants to be a neck so you can switch out the ring and stuff if you need to, Trainee Ring and Spinner's Ring. If you don't have a mythic item though, simply change the trainee and stranglers around. You can put on something like willpower, or you can use two trainee and get some extra magicka. So those are your options there. As with kind of the champion points and how do we use these, if you do have champion points, this is what I would use currently. If you don't have it, then just get a little work to get um, towards getting this. In the green one, it's really simple. You simply want this one up here. It's called Steed's Blessing. This increases your movement speed by 20% at max level and it has to be slotted. That's like the main one that you need to worry about. If you're farming XP for a long time though, get Liquid Efficiency to just, if you use a potion to save some resources, and also Rationer to increase your duration on foods and stuff, to again, to save money. Beyond that, the rest of it is up to you. There's no real oomph. I would suggest getting Steadfast Enchantment if you can. This does reduce your enchantment decay down to 100%, so you get like, no um, sort of drain on your enchantments, which is phenomenal. So really, really helpful there. For the blue CP, it's a bit more complicated, sadly, but I've put in just the bare minimum, so to make it easier for you. You need Untamed Aggression slotted. This is 150 weapon and spell damage, which can be boosted. You then want to have uh, reaving Blows, which heals you when you do damage, so that's really helpful. You want to have Wrath or Strikes, which gives you 300, so 33 weapon and spell damage per point. So it's 165 weapon and spell damage to our damage skills, which you can't see. You then obviously have the Eldritch Insight at max rank for just more Magicka. You do need to get some position in order to go and get access to the Reaving and the Wrath or Strikes. In the Extended Might, you have to push um, A on it on console or you just go in on PC and click. You want to have piercing which is more penetration. You want to get flawless ritual, at least get this to 20 so you can then unlock war mage which is again more damage. And then once you have something in extended might you can go all the way up to biting aura which increases your damage with AoE effects and because we're using deep fissure and shock ring these are both AoEs so this is a really, really useful thing to use. That is the blue CP that you need to have. Any other CP you have, if you have more than I do, just put it where you need. And if you don't have as much as I do, I would suggest getting Untamed Aggression early on and the penetration. And if you find survival hard, try and get Reaving Blows, that does really help. For the red CP, we have focused mainly into Sustain. So we get 150 Magicka back per kill plus 1,500 stamina back. This does combine with Vengeance Leech. So when we get Vengeance Leech and these together, that's 4,000 stamina back, which is per kill. We also get um, the 4,000 Magicka back plus the 3,600 from Destruction Kill. So it's like 7,600 Magicka per kill. It's really, really strong. We also have over here, uh, Boundless Vitality. This is here for more health as we use Stranglers. So this does help offset that. And I do chuck on some regen just to help with the recovery because why not? But that's what I use for the red CP. The rest of it is kind of just typical stuff. If you can get the sprinter though, that does help. But our stamina sustain is so high because we get so much per kill. So I wouldn't worry about sustain with this build. That though is the champion points. And that there is the build. I'm now going to show you on the map quickly a few spots that you might want to farm in. They are really useful. So. If you do have access to these, go there straight away. And I'm gonna tell you the XP numbers as well from testing this extensively. So the first spot and my favorite is a spot in Bancore. Bancore is in the Daggerville Covenant region. It is over here. It is just left of Craglawn and it is just right of Alkyria Desert. In Bancore, there is a way shrine called Natalia Ruins and we farm around here. If you can't get there, you have to travel from Eastern Evermore down the little road and as you can see, there's like a little sort of disappeared path here. 
there's actually an underground network that brings you out down here near the falls once you get here as you can see on the gameplay there's a loop that i do and this typically makes per 30 minutes of all the buffs on and stuff around about 1.8 million xp so that's what i was averaging having done this for about eight hours so i was getting a lot of xp really fast really quick this is very similar to the xp you gain from normal black crow's prison but you can do this by yourself which is great the issue is that if there's more people it can get congested quite quick my next spot which i really like is in rivenspire and it's a spot that not many people use called Mora's Hope. You have to go to Hoarfrost Downs Way Trine. You go down here to this little village. On the screen, you should be able to see the route right now. And you simply follow it around, killing the stuff as you go around. And this, although it's not the best XP spot, it gives you fighter skilled experience. So if you're after your fighter skilled, this is great to level up here. Whether it's CP or not CP, this is brilliant to level up. If you though are somebody who lacks money at times, if you go to Malabator, there is a place over here and it's not always marked on some of the websites but it's just here called the Crimson Cove and when you go there you can get gold and XP really well. So this is great as they drop just gold not items so you make money as you level up. So for those people buying potions and XP potions that's probably your best place. I will also put on screen some just loops that you can see in the gameplay as well. And then if you're somebody who goes oh I want to do this with a friend. All those spots work, but the best spot for just not being interrupted is Skyreach, as you can do this quite easily by yourselves. But if you don't have access to Skyreach, because you can't do it by yourself, you might want to go down to Merkmire, which is down here. There's a dungeon called Black Rose Prison. It's a trial. You can do this as a duo with two of you. There is a YouTuber called Nefas. He has a video on how to do this, and this is very similar XP to the spiders at Bancore. So I would recommend using the, like that video for more information, but that's around 1.6 to 2 million XP every 30 minutes. So it can be the best XP spot in the game, but that does depend on how quick you kill them. The reason why I prefer the spiders is because they're easier to kill, the one-shot kills. So that's why I prefer spiders. If you are wanting to get more XP though, you could go to Craglawn. There's a spot around here, I think it is, called the Spell Scar. That is a really good XP spot, but it's highly congested, which is why I've left it last. But that there are my XP spots that I would recommend using. The final and thing you can do, which I don't think I have on me, but if you do have it, you can do it yourself, is some Ritz. I don't think there's any on my character or on my bank. But Ritz farming is really good XP, just really, really expensive. But that there, guys and gals, is my build. That's what I use to farm XP. It's really quick, really efficient, and above all, it's a one bar build, which means it's really, really beginner friendly. And what's more, you get resources back for killing stuff, so there's no real stress, and you don't need to farm anything. You can buy all this from the get go. So that is it. Let me know what you think of this video. Do you find these types of builds helpful and useful? Do you want to see more PvE builds where I make more one bar stuff or overland content in my kind of unique sort of flavor and style? And if you do, then obviously let me know in the comments. But I'm going to wrap this video up here as it is long enough as it is. So I want to say a massive thank you to everybody who watched this far. It really helps. And more importantly, I want to say a huge thank you to those Patreons. Like your support allows me to make these videos. And without that, you know, it will be so much harder. So a massive, massive thank you to you guys. And if you want to support myself and see the videos early, have, have help in Discord and all that good stuff, there is a link in the description. As much or as little as you can really helps, but don't feel you have to. Liking, commenting, sharing is more than enough. But with that out of the way, I'm just going to wrap this one up here. So thanks for watching, guys. Take care and bye.